some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had Now, a one of the great questions that people got the creator that the obvious illustrated. If you were looking down or Jesus from a high line, does he not have an Uh, here in Ephesians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul has been writing about the Gentiles and he says, don't walk like the Gentiles, like the nations. They walk in the vanity of their minds. Now what does that mean? It means that their brains are not functioning. Their brains are not properly registering reality. If you're driving in a car and the speedometer is oscillating back and forth across the dial, it's absolutely useless to make any judgments about how fast you're going. The mind has been depraved, corrupted, warped by sin. Shortly after I moved to Mississippi, I attended a funeral of a young woman who had committed suicide. She had professed to be a Christian, but there was very little evidence in her life of that, certainly in later years. The speaker um, told a story. He said, when the tragedy occurred, I was talking to a man uh, about a spiritual decision that had to be made. And he had said to me that day on the phone, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to have to make up my own mind about this. And he said, young people, none of us is smart enough to make up our own mind about things. There was only one person who was smart enough to make up his own mind about everything. And we know that because he never made one mistake. But you know, he never made up his own mind about anything. He checked in with his father every morning. Morning by morning, God opened his ear and laid out the day for him. And he said, the words I speak, they're not my words. The deeds I do, I only do what the father tells me to do. He said, young people, if there are things in your mind that disagree with Jesus, they are strongholds of Satan in your brain and you must tear them down you must be ruthless because pointing to the coffin he said this is the end of that road only when our thinking is recalibrated by the Word of God can we make sound judgment now the Bible tells us that Jesus is the truth. In other words, as I read through the Bible and I see a principle here, I see a doctrine there, I see an idea there, and by the grace of God, my heart responds to it and I say, I like that, that looks like something I want in my life. And by the power of the Spirit of God, the truth of God transforms me. You know what I just discover? I discover that that idea, that doctrine, that principle is actually another aspect of the loveliness of Christ. And, and by responding in obedience to that truth, my life has been changed to be a little more like Jesus.